Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel with another review, and happy April. Um, no April Fools here, and I know April Fools has just recently passed. I actually was going to read the book April Fools by, um, I think it was Carolyn B. Cooney. No, I'm sorry. It's not by Carolyn B. Cooney. It's by the author of the book I'm reviewing today. Sorry. Um, but I didn't have time because I was reading other things, and yeah, so... Anyway, so I've been talking about Dark Shadows recently, and it being the 55th anniversary of Barnabas Collins, it's also the another anniversary for another uh, character who's a favorite of mine. Not my favorite incarnation of the character, and I think most people would agree with that, but still, it is an anniversary. It's actually two anniversaries for this character, and we're just going to talk about the earlier one, the one that I noticed hardly anyone is talking about. And that's the character of Buffy Summers from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, many people have been talking about it being the 25th anniversary of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and 25 years of Buffy Summers. That's not entirely true. Actually, it's the 30th anniversary of Buffy Summers. Um, the 25th anniversary is only of the television series. The 30th anniversary is of the character and the movie that started it all. Now, it may not have been the original vision of the creator, whose name I will not be mentioning in this video, nor in any of the tags that I use, you know, that I attach to this video, um, but, uh, still, I mean, it's noteworthy because it is the beginning of the character, it's our first iteration, and is somewhat canon to the Buffyverse, just, you know, an alternate version of it. So, in 1992, uh, July 31st, we were introduced to Buffy Summers with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is the novelization which I'm actually reviewing. And here is the movie. And yes, I paid $4.99 for this DVD and it's, uh, the, it's a little faded. But, um, I don't think the picture is all that faded. I think it's more or less the... Well, maybe it's all faded. But anyway, so Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the novelization, is by uh, Richie Tankersley Cusick, who I've read other books by. This will make it, I think, I've reviewed almost every book I've read by her, except for the second Buffy the Vampire Slayer book, uh, The Harvest, which I'm not sure if I'm going to do a review on that or not. I don't have that book anymore, so it would be um, her memory, but I do remember quite a bit about it, and I do remember enough to do a review on it, so we'll see. So, um, the book is about, you know, these teenage girls are disappearing all over L.A., um, and nobody knows why, and kind of, pretty much a lot of people are just kind of ignoring it, especially the teenagers of Hemry High, which many of these girls are coming from. One girl in particular, a senior in high school, one Buffy Summers, finds out soon that she has a connection to it. She has a destiny. She is the chosen one. After a mysterious British man named Merrick, it comes and tells her of her destiny. Um, so Buffy's destiny is, of course, to slay vampires. She's to find the vampires and kill the vampires and face the vampire king, who in this case is uh, Lothos. It was kind of a Count Dracula character in many ways, and also it's kind of like, he, almost like he got pretty much turned into the vision of the master. Now, the book version, I think, is superior to the film in many ways. It's not wonderfully well, it's not wonderfully written, but it's entertaining, and I think it's a little better than the film. I actually enjoy the film, starring Christy Swanson, Luke Perry, Donald Sutherland, Paul Rubens, Rudger Hauer, Hilary Swank, Ben Affleck has a cameo, but he's not, um, listed. Am I forgetting any? Oh, yeah. Um, what is his name from Scream? I love him in Scream, and I can't think of what his name is. David Arquette. He's in it, too. Um, I actually do like the film. It took me a while to get used to it and actually like it, especially since I was introduced to the television series first. But ultimately, I do like the film, but I do like the book a little better. It goes um, a little deeper. We learn more about the Watchers. In the movie, we don't. And uh, we learn a little bit more about Merrick. Merrick's depicted a little more differently. I think 
I think uh, for the most part the book is taken a little more seriously than the film. It's still got some funny antics, especially this one scene which I kind of wish they had done in the film was where Buffy takes a six-pack of Perrier to a Catholic church to ask a priest to bless it for her, and I think that was pretty funny. And there is an instance, an incident with a pencil that I cannot tell you about unless you read the book, and it is something that I will hint to you does come back around in the television series used by a different character. Um, and there's especially this one part where they're playing Mario Brothers, which I thought was kind of funny that Merrick and Buffy are in this um, warehouse, which in the movie it's like an old theater or something. Um, but in the book it's a warehouse. I assume in the original script it was supposed to be. There is another adaptation of this film, and uh, it's a comic book. I don't know if there's a graphic novel version of it, but it's called Buffy the Vampire Slayer The Origin, and it is like four issues that um, depict the uh, events from the story, as well as at the ending, it jumps back to what looks like Buffy season three, where she's been telling her friends, Willow and Xander, about her earliest adventure, or adventures. So it kind of, you know, canonizes the, uh, the events, at least somewhat. Of course, Buffy couldn't be a senior at Henry High in the Buffyverse, but anyway. Um, all in all, it's kind of a silly concept, but it's also a very empowering concept for, you know, for women. And I know there's been all this drama lately and accusations, which is very hard for a Buffy fan to hear, but I, I stand with um, those who have made those accusations and, you know, especially Charisma Carpenter, who is in the TV series as uh, Cordelia Chase. I stand with her and all the other cast members that had issues too with the creator whose name I am not saying. That's my protest of forget him, but remember Buffy. So, anyway. Um, I gave this book, I think, I recently reread it this year. It's the first book I read for the year, and it was, I think I gave it three or four stars. I can't remember for sure. Um, I think it was, I think it was three. It's not wonderfully well written, but it's entertaining, and I think it's enjoyable. And, uh, yeah, so I'd highly recommend if you get a chance to get this book. I've had this book for years. I got it at a dollar store along with the other one, and I can't find the other one. I don't know what I did with it. I'm pretty sure I did not get rid of it. But anyway, so, um, yeah, that's my review, and happy 30 years of Buffy Summers, or 25 years of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I will see you guys soon with a new review and other videos as well coming up. So, see you soon. Bye-bye.